Hey y'all, and we are back with another car ride chat. I am leaving work right now, and today I wanted to chat with you all about accounts. This video, we're going to talk about the five accounts that I think everyone should have, that I think you should have, and the order in which you should have them. And I say that to say that we can't do everything at once, right? We got to take steps. We got to take steps. So these are the steps that I would take in the order that I would take them in and some of the things I would look for. So we're going to talk about them, okay? The first account that I think everyone should have, a checking account. A checking account. Simple enough. And what I would look for in a checking account is one, no fees. No fees. There are plenty of banks out there that do not charge fees, and there are plenty of banks out there that do. For instance, I had an account with Wells Fargo. I closed that account because it was too many um, rules, such as you have to have direct deposit every month, and you have to have a certain balance every month, and if not, it charges you a fee to have that account. I'm not with it. Now, yeah, a lot of accounts are going to charge you fees for your checks and so on and so forth. And they may even charge ATM fees. But the main thing I would say is not to have a fee just for having the account. Okay? And I'm sorry about the bad lighting. Y'all know how these car ride chats do. We don't know where the sun going to be. And we driving where we driving. So that's what that is. I would make sure that there was a low or no minimum balance that needed to be in the account if it's a balance something like it has to have like $25 $100 something to that effect that's okay but nothing too out of the ordinary anything more than $500 would be a no go for me after all this is a checking account it is not a savings account if it is possible I would look for a checking account with a credit union if it's possible, I have like a checking account with practically every credit union out there. Ah! And the reason why, and again, these checking accounts don't have to have a very big balance. So some of them have as little as $50 in them. But the reason why is because once you have an account with the credit union, it makes you a member of that credit union. Credit unions are historically known for having great loan products. And when I say a loan products, that's if you're shopping around for a car loan. If you're shopping around for a house loan, if you're shopping around for a personal loan, historically, their interest rates have been better than traditional banks or other um, institutions that are known for giving out loans. So that's why I would say a credit union. Okay. The other thing I would do if a credit union is not possible is I would then opt for, or if you can do both, that's awesome because I have. A credit union that I'm with that does both but if it's a credit union or a bank that doesn't have a brick and mortar that is key right there why because if it's an online place like an online bank or an online credit union what's gonna happen with most of them is that they waive ATM fees so look for that if you're opening up with an institution that only has online, make sure that one of the benefits is that they waive ATM fees because they don't have a brick and mortar. And sometimes even in the waiving of ATM fees, make sure you know the rules because some of them have a limit. Some of them say we waive up to five ATM transactions a month or so on and so forth. So know the rules. And because this is a checking account, what I personally do is I personally only keep enough in that account to cover my bills, my monthly bills, and I keep a cushion of about $200 extra in that account so that I am protected against overdrafts, like I am my own overdraft protection. However, once again, if you can find an account that has a great overdraft protection program that's free, awesome and I don't necessarily have an overdraft protection that links it to another account within that same institution why because where I hold my savings may not be where that account is where my checking account is and I say this is important because some people say well why not just hold 
let's say like $500 in another savings account in that same bank. Why? Because that $500 can do more elsewhere. It could do more elsewhere. And so therefore, become your own overdraft protection and just keep a cushion in your account so that you don't accidentally overdraft, which again, if you do good money management, if you do good budgets, things like that, you should never overdraft anyway. But we're human, things happen. So just keep a cushion in that checking account. So again, I don't keep no more in that checking account than I need in order to pay my bills. So that leads us to the second account that I think you should have. And that is a high yield savings account now again I love to make life easy I love simplicity if you can find all of these things in one place great but do not do not do not sacrifice your coins because you are being lazy or you just feel like you don't want to do the extra things to do the extra things. Sometimes the extra things are worth it. They really are. And once you have these things set up, it's going to be a no-brainer and it's going to be easy, okay? So don't let the extra things deter you from doing the extra things. And I say the extra thing because your high yield savings account may be with another bank altogether from your, from your checking account. And that is actually better for you. It's better. Why? Because when your accounts are in two different banking institutions, it makes it so that it's not easy to get to. And when things are easy to get to, it means that you don't easily just spend the money because you know how to press a button and have the money readily available to you. For my long-term savings accounts, I do not have cards to them. I do not have a uh, debit card to those accounts. I do not have, obviously it's a savings account, so you don't have checks to those accounts. I do not have anything that makes it easy for me to access the money. If I want to access the money, I have to E, A, either go to a brick and mortar bank, or B, I have to do the financial tr transactions online that may take a day to three days to actually have the funds available to me. That is convenient for me because the idea is to save your money and to let your money grow. Now, y'all, you can find an awesome high yield savings account. All you really have to do is Google, do a Google search, best high yield savings account, and put in the year that you're searching. This right now is 2023, so put best high year savings accounts 2023. And you're gonna see so many people who've compiled lists and they're gonna weigh the pros and cons for you, okay? They're gonna let you know the interest rates that those accounts can make and they're gonna basically, they've done the work for you and it's gonna be super easy to make a decision from there. The purpose of my savings account is to store money that I'm gonna not touch or rarely touch and when I say rarely touch it means that I may use this money every six months for things like my taxes like when my property taxes are due on my house or when my property taxes are due on my car this is where that money is stored because while I'm not spending the money it is earning an interest rate Currently, and a lot of you know this because I've been talking about this, I recently opened up a high yield savings account with Goldman Sachs Marcus account and I absolutely love it. Now, I want to do a separate video on the pros and cons of this account, but let's just hit a few of the highlights. A few of the highlights is this. No minimum balance. You don't have to have a minimum balance to open an account here. No fees. So there is no monthly fee that you have to pay just for having the account there. B, the interest rate is um it's an adjustable interest rate that means that this month like when i opened up my account the interest rate was 3.75 then it went to 3.9 and it currently is at 5.15 so this means that i'm not stuck with the interest rate at the time when I opened up the account. The interest rate can rise and it can also fall, but more importantly, it can rise, right? What really sealed the deal for me with this account is the fact that it had a referral option. And one of my subscribers, one of y'all, sent me her referral link and that link gave me an extra percent. So when I opened up at 3.75, I got 4.75 for three months, right? And then... When it went up to 3.9, I got 4.9, and I'm currently getting 5.15, okay? In one month, 
I made over $400 in interest on my money. The same money was sitting in a different bank account before, a regular savings account, where I got $4 a month in interest on that same amount of money. Moved it over to this high yield savings account, and boom, just like that. The 400 over $400 on that same amount of money. All right. Somebody had said that they were more interested in having um, opened up with a credit union. The thing about it is just because it's a credit union, credit unions are not paying higher interest rates. They're not paying higher interest rates. I know. I have an account with all of them. All right. And so I just say that to say sometimes your best bet is going to be with putting your money somewhere where it can grow. Again, I love my credit unions, but I keep small amounts of cash in them just so that I can be a member so I can take advantage of financial opportunities when I'm using it for strategic purposes. And I use one for my regular checking account, okay? And with that being said, if you're interested, and this is this is not sponsored, this is not a sponsored video, but if you're interested in open up one of these accounts and you would like to have a referral code so that you can get a percent higher in the interest rate, shoot me an email, leave a comment below and shoot me an email and I will get you a referral code, okay? I want to find somewhere to park because this light is just annoying the heck out of me and I just feel like this information is so, is so good where you shouldn't have to be distracted by this harsh light the third account that i think you should have and this is actually this can actually be two accounts but i actually think you should have a 401k account and or a roth ira okay first the 401k first the 401k account the reason why i say this is because there are multiple benefits one this is going to be your pre-tax income so if you have a day job if you have a day job you work for an employer Hopefully they have a 401k program and what's going to happen is that when you get paid before the money even hits your paycheck, it's going to go to this account and you're not going to be taxed on that money. Okay. So that's a way to cut down on your taxes. And again, you can adjust how much you send and you can um, move it month to month. It doesn't even have to be the same thing every single month. But the beautiful part is this is something that you can set and forget. This is why I'm a big fan of it. Not so much because I don't think that you can't invest on your own in the market. But a lot of times, how many of us actually do? How many of us actually do? Whereas if we're doing a 401k plan, it's just going to do it automatically for us. And I love the fact that we cannot touch this money. And if you do touch the money, because you can, you can, you can. But if you do, there will be a penalty. We want to avoid that penalty. So a lot of times we just let that money ride and sit and slide and do what it's intended to do and that's to prepare us for our retirement age i know that a lot of people feel like they're too young to be thinking about retiring but honestly i really wish that's one of the biggest mistakes i made i did not take advantage of my retirement accounts when i was younger i didn't i felt like i needed the money i felt like i had time and then next thing you know year after year after year you're getting older and older and older and now that when you're my age you start looking at things like your net worth and you're just like i wish i had more i wish i had more and you can have more if you start today if you start as soon as possible okay the other benefit of a 401k account for a lot of places a lot of companies is that you will find that sometimes they will match you they will match you. And if they don't ask about it, because sometimes they don't even tell you this information up front, or sometimes they may have told you in your income and briefing, but because it wasn't on your radar, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. Because if you were anything like I was, it's like, eh, I got other things to do with my money. I'm, I don't even care about those things. But if they match you, that is money that you are leaving on the table. So I would say at the very least, if you find out that your company matches, let's say if they match up to 3%, at least put 3% into your 401k and let them match you. That's extra money that you can get into your experience and that you can have sitting and playing in the market, okay? The next one I said was a Roth IRA. Now the thing about the IRA is it's gonna be your after-tax income. But the beautiful part about it being after taxes is once you pull it out in your retirement years, it's not taxed again. So that means that money gets to go into the market and grow, grow, grow with compound interest and um, the rising of the market because we're not going to claim the fall, but the rising of the market. And so all the money that that money that you've invested made, it won't be taxed again because it was already taxed before you went in. Now, that sounds like an awesome deal. 
and the government knows it's an awesome deal. Therefore, they only allow you, as of 2023, they only allow you to invest $6,500 into a Roth IRA, okay? For your 401k, they allow you to do a little better. For those of us, for those who are 50 years and beyond, you can actually do an extra $1,000. So you can do $7,500 into a Roth IRA. For the 401k, they allow you to invest more money into that. You are allowed to invest $22,500. Now, I say my strategy would be to work on maxing out one. I currently work on maxing out my 401k and I know there are other schools of thoughts on this and if you have a different school of thought feel free to drop it down in the comments but we're just going to go with what I do and so I max out my 401k and then I max out my Roth IRA or your traditional IRA okay um there are other videos out there that can go into more detail on that and you can find them in one day, one day, one day. Maybe I'll do a video on this channel on it as well, okay? So these right here, we're just hitting the highlights. We're not really going in depth. But also feel free to ask questions down there. And if you want to add to the conversation, feel free to do that at any point in this video, all right? And then of course, if you can... Do both. You are allowed to do a 401k and you're allowed to do an IRA program. So if you can, do both. If not, I say start with your 401k if you have that available to you and then do your Roth IRA. If you are self-employed, do the IRA. Do the IRA program, okay? The fourth account that I think you should do will be a health savings account. Now, not everybody has health savings accounts. Some people's companies will offer a flex savings account, a FSA. Now, there's a difference. There's a difference. The thing with the FSA, it does have to come through a company, through the company you work for, and you have to spend that money every single year. You're not allowed to save that money up, okay? So every year you have to use it or lose it. So I would say if you are doing an FSA, hold on. I would say that if you are doing an FSA, make it strategic. Make it strategic. Only put in that account what you know you have coming up in that year as far as health expenses are concerned. If you know that you and or your family are, you know, you kind of traditionally do have a lot of medical appointments, a lot of medical things pop up, prepare for that, fund that account with that money. If you know, we know we have our eye exams, our dental exams, things like that, and out-of-pocket expenses that you that's not covered by your health insurance, fund your account with that. But just keep in mind that you have to use the money. I have had an FSA in the past, and guess what, guys? At the end of the year, I found myself having to buy, having to buy like Chanel eyeglasses and name brand sunglasses and things like that because I had to spend the money. So keep that in mind. I would say, again, with the FSA, try to only fund it with what you typically use. Me having to buy name brand sunglasses was abuse. It was abuse. Okay. Um, the benefit of the FSA, once again, this is pre-tax money. So that's why we do want to fund those accounts because it's pre-tax tax money. Now, what I love is my HSA. Now, the problem with the HSA, though, is usually for high deductible plans. It's for when you have a high deductible on your health insurance and your insurance usually doesn't kick in until you meet that deductible. Why it works for me is because I don't typically have a lot of health issues throughout the year so it's perfectly fine i also work for a company that funds my hsa with half of the money that i'm allowed to do and i think i don't remember the number off top but i think it's somewhere like three thousand or thirty five hundred for a single person a year that we're allowed to put into that account but here's why i love my hsa because one the money gets to go into the market. You have to set it up that way. So if you have an HSA and it's not set up that way, please look into that. But it gets to go into the market. Therefore, it gets to um, again get compound interest and it gets to play in stocks and ETFs and all of that fun stuff going to change y'all. Hold on. 
Yeah. So I get to grow my money in that way. The thing about the HSA is, again, it's pre-tax money that's going into this account. So the money that I fund this account with, I do not have to pay taxes on. I love that for me. Okay. The other thing is it rolls over year after year after year. Even after you leave your company, you still get to keep that account. Now, here's the beautiful part. Here's the beautiful part. And this is what a lot of people do. I'm not that organized, so I don't do it. But this is what you totally can do. If you have medical expenses that are not covered by your insurance that you have to pay out of pocket, today, you can very well pay that out of your pocket. Let's say like if I have a $100 bill that I have to pay out of my pocket, I can pay that with my regular $100. And I can leave my money in my HSA. Because remember, it's playing in the market. So if I leave that money there, that's money that's invested in the market, making more money. At any given point in time, from now till infinity, until the day, well, I don't know how it works after you die. Like, I don't know if your heirs get to claim things. But let's say from now to let's say when I'm 70. When I'm 70, I can then take all those receipts that I have if you save them in an electronic filing system and you remember where they're at, you can then go and claim that money then and then get all that money back. The benefit of that is your money has grown tremendously because it stayed in the market, right? I don't do that though because like I said, I don't trust me <laughs> to remember all the things, right? So I do um, use it if I have a big medical bill. But if I have something small like $100 and below, I will just use my own money and leave my money in the HSA. This is the other beautiful part. This is the other beautiful part. Now you might have to check this number because numbers change year after year after year. But as of right now, when you're 65 years old, when you're 65, you can actually use the money in your HSA for other expenses. It doesn't have to be for medical. Is that not beautiful? Is that not beautiful? Now, you will have to pay taxes on that money. You will. If you use it on medical expenses, you don't have to pay taxes on the money. But if you use it after 65 on other things, because before 65, you're not allowed to use it on other things. It has to be on medical only, right? Um, approved medical only. Approved, 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 approved. And I say that to say... Things like maybe, let's say, cosmetic surgery, if not authorized by a doctor, like if a doctor doesn't say you have to have something because of a health issue, you can't use your HSA to fund those things, okay? But if it's approved medical con condition, you can use your HSA. However, after 65, you can use it for anything. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? It Not only did it grow money in the market, but now it's also another retirement bank account for me. So if at 65, if I decide, you know what, I don't have medical issues, or maybe I have some other health insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, Medi Medi whatever, and I don't need it like that, I can actually use it to fund my living expenses. I think that's a beautiful thing. So that's why I say the HSA is the most slept on and underrated account out there. I didn't even know all of this, okay? And I've been working for a million and 39 years, guys. But yeah, so that's the next thing I would fund, okay? The last account that I think everybody should have after all of that, again, in order, one, two, three, four, after all of those accounts, you set those things up and you have those things and now you still have some extra money to play with, I say set up a brokerage account. The brokerage account is going to be your investment account. Just like your 401k is in the market making money. Just like your IRA is in the market making money. Just like your HSA is in the market making money. This account is going to be in the market making money too. And you can buy single stocks if you want. But at the same time, you can also just mirror what your 401k is doing. What plans are they in? Are you buying mutual funds with those things? Are you buying EF ETFs with them? Um, and again, this is just a high level one. We can go, we can dive deeper if you guys want on each of these subjects. But the bottom line is you're going to send this extra money to your broke account. Now let's go back up to the high yield savings account. So again, my high yield savings account makes 5.5%, 5.15% of interest right now, right? Which is absolutely wonderful. However, 
I'm only going to have enough in my high yield savings account to fund my living for, let's say, up to a year. Let's say at, at most a year, at minimum three months. Then I'm also going to put my long-term things in there. Like if I have, again, your insurance, like we have property, car, tax insurance that we have to pay here in Virginia. So if I have things like that and I'm just saving that money, setting that money up, I'm putting it there. If I'm saving up for a vacation fund, I'm putting that money there just to let it earn interest, guys. Because if I put, I believe it's $7,000. I was just doing this math earlier today. I don't remember. But let's say $7,000. $7,000 can earn me $35 extra dollars a month in interest. In interest. Sometimes, believe it or not, believe it or not, I know a lot of people don't like to believe this, the market doesn't even make those returns in a month. Sometimes the market loses money. Sometimes I'm negative 2% down in the market. But... Sometimes I'm 12% up in the market, okay? So this is why I say the extra money I'm going to put in my broker account because that is going to be my savings account on steroids, okay? With that, I'm going to invest in things that I understand. You can do searches once again. What are the best ETFs to invest in? What are the best single stocks to invest in? Things like that. Um, again, do your research. Figure it out on your own. Um, watch the market a little bit. But the thing that I would do if I were you is just look at what's my 401k being invested in? What are the, what's being bought with my 401ks? What's being bought with my IRAs? Things like that. And just mimic that in the market until you learn more. Do not wait and procrastinate like I did, thinking I have to know all of the things today before I make a move. No, you can jump in and start making moves for real, okay? Um, the thing about the brokerage account, while there's no tax advantages, you're putting money in there that has already been taxed, and when you pull the money out, it's going to be taxed again. But the thing about it is you don't have to wait till a retirement age to start pulling the money, okay? When we get into closer to our retirement age there's a point in our time where we have to start liquidating some of our assets so that we can live off of them okay um this is for those of us who plan on retiring before we reach our th that retirement age i don't remember what it is what what's the national retirement age this these days is it 65 is it 70 is it 72 i don't remember what it is but if we plan to retire a day before any of that we do have to have some money set aside elsewhere that we have access to your brokerage account you will always have access to your 401k you have to wait till retirement age or there's a penalty your roth ira you have to wait till retirement ages or there's a penalty so on and so forth okay so guys that is what it is those are the five and a half accounts that I would have if I were you and that I think everybody should have in the order in which I think you should have them in. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and we will learn and grow together and talk to me down in the comments. And again, if you have anything to add to this conversation, feel free and we're going to talk about it then and there. I don't know all the things. I really don't. I'm learning as I go and whatever I learn, whenever I learn, I share it with you. If there's anything that I learn about as far as different bank accounts and everything, I will definitely let you know. But I did tell you the accounts that I think are good, like the Marcus account, the Goldman Sachs Marcus, that interest rate, super awesome. And the fact that it has this referral portion that you will also get a referral code too, and you can um, take advantage of that. As far as my broker account, I believe I, have to, I, I use two banks. The one off top that I know is super easy is Fidelity, okay? I might do a tutorial later on on how to set that up if you guys are interested. Let me know. But Fidelity is a is a good one that I use. Um, yeah, super comprehensive, super fairly simple to set up, okay? So until the next video, y'all, thank y'all so much for watching. And until then, peace, peace, peace.